The patient selection, I think it's another important thing. And I that's what I alluded to proposed title of are you over treating or under treating patients? Patients. And I think that um, what I see is that uh, I think what we all see is that there is a lot of room to increase awareness and physician education about patients who will benefit from stenting. Um, I, we still see patients that even in like, you know, large metropolitan centers with academic hospitals and, you know, access to the latest information and et cetera, et cetera, patients that are not offered stenting and they are offered shunt um, without the stenting being discussed. Um, there are neurologists who still don't believe in this. There are neuroophthalmologists who are still skeptical. And I think we have as a society and as individuals, we have a lot of uh, uh, room to increase awareness of the, this procedure in the patients that we already know that this works very well. Fulmin and IIH, patients with papilledema and vision loss, refractory to medical management, patients with high intracranial pressure headaches, refractory to medical management, and patients with debilitating passive tinnitus. There's a lot of studies out there, a lot of good work that has been done from many different groups that shows that these patients benefit from venous stenting much better than anything else. And we have to promote this. We have to educate our colleagues. We have to um, do everything we can to make sure that this treatment is offered to as many patients in these groups as possible. So I still think that in this category of patients, we are still under treating uh, with venous sinus stenting. Again, New York might be different than you know, Dallas and maybe different than Indianapolis, but, uh, and I chose this like randomly, but my point is that there is still a lot of convincing to do for patients that we know based on good evidence from, from multiple studies that venous stenting will help them. On the other hand, I think what at least I see from you know, patients with second opinions and third opinions, et cetera, is that stenting is often offered for symptoms that we are not sure that you know, we're, we're treating correctly. Um, I don't want to get into too much details because uh, I mean, I'll wait for the Q&A for that, but we should offer this exceptionally only when for things that we don't have or for indications that are not well studied and not well uh, proven. And that goes back to the comment I made earlier, having venous stenosis does not mean that requires venous stenting. Um, nothing bad can happen to a patient with venous stenosis that has no symptoms overnight. Patients can be followed, can be monitored, can be treated when things get worse, and, and they, need, they need to hear that. They should not hear that, oh, you have venous stenosis, and you have to fix this because 10 years later, you may develop IIH. Uh, so this, this is things that I see more and more, and I think we're not offering good service to our patients when we, when we, when we, we have this approach. Um, and so there's an element of over-treatment that is small, but I think it's getting a little larger, uh, and we have to be careful as a society and, and individuals about this.